this meeting brings together scientists from all over the world to present basically their latest findings in, in the field of water. And there's a lot going on in the field of water. There are a lot of interesting uh, teams from Italy, amazing teams. They're doing amazing study from Japan as well, from Russia. So it's really a big development worldwide. You know, water used to be a, a prime subject of study, but over the past 20, 30, 40 years, it kind of um, lost its way. And the, the reason is that many people have been focusing on molecules and on simulations and, and, and have lost sight of the centrality of water for all of nature, for, for um, uh, physical aspects of nature and, the, and biological too. After many years of research, it was found that water is totally enigmatic substance. Water is the most simple molecule in the world but has to be the most studied molecule in the world because there is so many mysteries of the water and we don't know exactly what's happened with, uh, with uh, this simple uh, H2O. So it's very nice to find here all these researchers sharing this information and try to understand uh, what's happened really with uh, water, seawater, cells and all this relation for health. You know, we all, we all grow up learning and understanding that water has three phases, right? A solid, a liquid, and a vapor. But even 100 years ago, uh, scientists knew that something was amiss because you can't explain all the features of water with those three phases. We are essentially waterly systems. And so if we calculate how many water molecules are in our body in comparison to protein molecules, to lipid molecules, to sugar, to DNA and so on, it will turn out that we are 99 plus percent of water. Our scientists have been interested in, in the possibility that there may be a different phase, a fourth phase, an ordered phase of water. And so a, a few proponents of, of this view include, um, well, Albert St. Georgi, who is the father of modern biochemistry. He, he knew uh, that there was an ordered phase of water. And Gilbert Ling, who is now 97 years old and still kicking, uh, wildly and loudly. Uh, he wrote uh, six books, I believe it is, that describe the water inside the cell, inside our cells, as being different from ordinary water in a glass, different in the sense that the molecules are lined up. But what uh, modern established science does not know is the so-called mesoscopic water, water of water in samples. Mesoscopic, so microscopic, mesoscopic, microscopic. So microscopic is known, these are molecules. Macroscopic is known, this is bulk water. Mesoscopic, this is in between. These are uh, ordered um, aggregates or ordered clusters of water. I would say based on uh, coherent modes. Light comes into the picture, order comes into the picture, charge separation comes into the picture. And, and these features are fundamental for any, anything in, in nature. And that's, that's why this water takes on such importance. A couple of interesting properties of uh, this water that I should mention. The first, I mean, besides being ordered, um, another is that it's charged. It's not neutral. Water is neutral, but this fourth phase of water is generally negatively charged. And, and right next to this, this uh, fourth phase water, or easy water that we call it sometimes, uh, uh, right next to it is ordinary water that has the opposite, positive charge. So you have uh, two charges that are separated, the negative charge of the easy and the positive charge in the water. And that's like a battery. And in fact, you can put electrodes in, and we actually have a patent for that in the company that's beginning to develop it. You can put two electrodes in, and uh, you can get electrical energy out. And this electrical energy comes from water and, and light. Water has significant role. And we propose idea that uh, water may be material carrier of consciousness in the field and in the universe. This Congress brings together the leading experts in so many fields that will have the crosstalk that's missing in most Congresses where you just function on a particular discipline or theme. Here we see the environmental issues, we see the importance of hydrology, we see the importance of being more conscious of what 
scientific measurement is showing us. Will we survive or will we take, shall we say, a step backwards and go back several hundred years because we do not see the environmental hazards? Here we have those individuals who have, hopefully, the bigger picture, the bigger plan, and that's exciting. And so we created this conference to provide a venue in, in which people who, not only people who have interesting findings can present them to one another and, and to the world, but also to nucleate uh, interest in, in water because water is so central to uh, all of nature. This gets people together with all different ideas and in a place where they're willing to discuss and debate. If only conservative scientists meet, it can be a very scientific meeting, but there's little progress normally. If only the people meet who are outside the paradigm, they're without foundation. Now the interesting thing happens when these two worlds interact, and this happens at this conference. We have seen in the conference physicians and physicists and uh, well, from all kinds of fields of science. It is very difficult to find uh, interdisciplinary conference so, so well organized, so, so open-minded uh, and so in also deep in, uh, in the every uh, particular field, chemical, biology, physics. So I think it is very, very important. So the water conference is very important in terms of unifying and joining all of us. They present their own research. They present their own data. That is very important. And uh, this is really new uh, stage of uh, scientific development. It has been really wonderful to meet these wonderful people and to uh, just share ideas and thoughts and I'm sure that, that the reverberations of, of all of that will go on for, for a long time to come. For me it's the people, okay. um, more than the topics we present, because we're here for a reason, not just because we want to see ourselves in a paper or in a photograph or nothing like that. We're here because we all love water and we're passionate about it because water has amazing properties that we haven't even begun to explore. So to have people who are in, uh, working in these fields and understanding these things about water and all of these aspects within the body uh, is quite helpful for the future of medicine. I think that the water and resonance light therapies in the future are the medicine of the future. Uh, we can measure coherence in water non-invasively and we could diagnose, we could relate coherence to diagnosis and health condition. So what we do, we, we bring them into to the reality. We, we want to do something out of this. We do want to develop a technology that is based on these ideas that could be beneficial for, for people, animals or whatever. I think that uh, is a fantastic opportunity for mankind just to grow and to be ready for the quantum leap. And now the question is, what do the people do with it?